Have you ever thought of doing plastic surgery? Have you ever like stripped naked and looked at your body in the mirror and thought, oh my God, this is far from perfect. That has been my life for a long time and plastic surgery became the next option and I thought that I would look better if I fixed my boobs, if um, I trimmed my stomach, if I got a little bit of um, a booty to cover my hip dips and if I bleached my skin just a little bit and well, well, well. Who? Let's just introduce the video and then we get into this conversation. Body crazy cubby. What does she say? Crazy cubby, big tits, tiny waist. Yeah? <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to another episode of the vlog. My name is Indira Ganga. I'm so excited that you're here. Now, hey. <laughs> anyway plastic surgery is what we're discussing today so if you watch tv or your social media you know the in thing right now is this thing they call slim thick okay you have titties you have a small waist that doesn't have any fat you have a nice round cute arse and you're light you know you're fair and that's that's this is a message that has been drummed home over and over and over again look at me i'm dark one I'm dark, do not let the light lie to you. I'm a dark babe. And I'm dark as my dad, which is amazing. Um, um, I don't have the kind of boobs that I see on Instagram. Um, my waist is far from flat. Like, I have organs in my stomach. So, I mean, yeah. And, and I have hip dips. And when you keep consuming media, and it's a platform where I work, their messages constantly telling you, you're not good enough, you're not beautiful enough, you're not worthy enough. This is not good, this is what's good. And what's good looked like Kim Kardashian, like Cardi B, like Nicki Minaj, you know. And you get beaten down so much that it gets here and you start thinking, maybe I'm not good enough, maybe I just need to conform and fix it. And I had gotten to a place where I was so insecure about my body and I had made a decision. I made the decision that um, I was going to fix my boobs and just um, get them to be packy, fuller and uh, I don't know, I don't know how to explain this in simple terms. I just wanted a packy booby and a little bit fuller, boobs that didn't need a bra, you know, you can wear anything that you want and just I wanted to feel as confident as all the other girls were in the pictures that I was seeing um, and it had taken a toll on my self-esteem heavily because I remember there was a time when um, I was just like there are certain pieces of clothing that I would avoid there are certain things that I would avoid just because I didn't I didn't feel good enough, I didn't feel comfortable enough and it affected, it affected my social life a lot because I was just like why can't I look like all the other girls and it was really affecting me and so I made the decision, I looked for a doctor, I was torn between two places, either do it in South Africa or do it at a private facility in Nairobi. I looked at the costing, I knew how much it was going to cost, I knew the name of the doctor, the details, all the surgeries they'd done before and all that stuff. Until one day I just had a very casual conversation with my former boss, her name is Ingrid, and she's slightly older, by older I mean like three or four years older than me, but she has very amazing insights on life. And we were just having a conversation and I brought it up. I was like, oh, I'm going to fix the boobs like soon. And she was like, what? <laughs> what do you mean you're going to fix your boobs? Like, what's wrong with them? I was like, oh, they're not packy. They're not full. They're not round. I have to depend on a bra. And she said, based on what? Based on whose boobs are you deciding that yours are not good enough? And I was like, but everything that we see online, everybody is perfect. And she said, on the road, if everyone in this office took off their bra, you'd see that <laughs> your breasts look like every other person's boobies. Like, 
forget what you see online. These are real people. If they took off their clothes, you'd see bodies that look like yours. You'd see stretch marks, you'd see cellulite, you'd see fat, you'd see people that look like you. But the problem was, we never see each other naked. The people that you see naked online are the influencers or semi-naked, and the look has been curated to perfection. And when you go on Instagram, these services are so like, the bodies are on your face, and then also the doctors are on Instagram. Like, <laughs> it's so crazy. And they show you before, after like 24 hours after liposuction, this is how she looks. Guys, if, if me, I was to do a liposuction, like, where will the fat come from? Like, I, I'm mostly muscle. So, <laughs> if I was to do it, where will the fat come from? I'll have to start gaining weight and all that stuff. So, my friend really opened my eyes and, 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 and showed me that it's the online community that had made, created these unattainable standards of beauty, like chasing vanity. If you watch Botched, you'd know that it's never enough. You know, someone comes in for the first procedure, second procedure, third procedure, fourth procedure, you become so addicted to it. And Tonto Dike has admitted publicly that she's, she's, she's addicted to plastic surgery. And she's even said she doesn't gym, she does surgery. Can you imagine? And these people, these celebrities have been paid to endorse these products and say these kinds of things. Yet they forget that there are people who are consuming that information and are made to feel like they are not good enough. And I remember also Ingrid telling me that one procedure is never enough. You'll have to keep sort of going for corrective procedures, say after 10 years, or maybe if you have kids, things change, the body changes, the skin and all that stuff, things change. And for me, that really, I was like, one, the reason that was holding me back from surgery was because I don't like invasive procedures. I was just like, is there a way? There's no way. So it, if I was going to do surgery, it had to be a one-time thing. And then she told me it's not a one-time thing. You'll have to do like two or three or four in your lifetime. And if you're lucky, that's if you're not botched. The other thing is you'll get implant sickness. I think Claire Crawley has spoken about it, where implants are a foreign substance in your body. Sometimes your body accepts them, sometimes your body rejects them. You'll be so sick, you'll have to go and take them out. I think the other thing, again, was the fact that it's just... It's so dangerous and nobody tells you it's dangerous. Like, before I came to do this video, I was online and I saw a doctor who'd posted a before and after of a liposuction just 24 hours, or is it two hours later? And he said they'd done a 360 liposuction. Now from everything that I've read and watched online, if you watch the Jada Pinkett Smith um, Red Table Talk on plastic surgery, she was saying that, the doctor there rather was saying, these procedures kill people. So doctors were saying sometimes people do a lot. You go in, you lipo your stomach, you lipo your hands, you lipo your back, and they do so, they do a tummy tuck, they fill your uh, back with fat, they do a breast implant. By the time they're done, they've done so many procedures on you that healing becomes very, very difficult. The other thing again is with liposuction, yeah, you want like to look like to have that hourglass shape. The, the, it's very easy to get a pulmonary embolism, I'll, I'll insert the word, because it's easy to get fat injected into your bloodstream and for the fat to go into your lungs and you die. It's not even a joke, like people die from these things. So having read all this stuff and having hard conversations with people, you just get to realize that I think plastic surgery is, has been commercialized, you know? I don't think when plastic surgery is being invented, it was invented for the vanity that is being used for right now. And that conversation with Ingrid changed my mind on a lot of things and also just speaking to medical experts about the, the cost one, because it's not cheap. To get a good doctor and to do a good procedure will cost you about 10,000, 20, 30, 40,000. US dollars like do you want to be investing this money in all this stuff when I think of myself I'm not one to like wear and post bikini pictures on IG so yeah we fixed it but but nobody fixes 
their body to hide it in a burqa. So it was just, when I had all these conversations with myself and thought of the risk that lied therein, it wasn't worth it. And it's because of people like Ingrid who, in as much as we are all in the media industry and we're all creating content, they've made it sort of okay to have these conversations and tell you, forget what you see online, this is how women look, this is how your body is going to change, and it's okay. I was reading something on Sarah Jessica Packer today, and she was saying, people sort of are disgusted when women are being women, like, she's, she's aging, she's growing old, she's not young, and um, people sort of don't want her to be old, you know, like, people, I'm like, oh, she's so old. Yeah, she's old. <laughs> like, yes, she's old. She's lived for 50, 60, 70 years. <laughs> she's definitely old. So what's wrong with you? Like, what's wrong with a natural process of her aging? I think the other thing was the fact that she, she just understands that this is a natural process and there's nothing I can do about it. And even with fighting it, you can only do so much. I mean, like, you're 70, do you want to get plastic surgery? <laughs> you look like you're sick somewhere, you know? I also read a quote somewhere where somebody was saying, oh my God, she's 14, she's so young. And the quote was saying, 40 is young. We've been made to think that we're so old so we can buy all these products. You're made to think that if your body doesn't look a certain way, then you're not good enough and you need to pay a certain doctor at Beverly Hills or Nairobi Karen a lot of money or Santa Johannesburg to be able to look a certain way. And it made a lot of sense for me because my phone was there and Tibet is 40, she looks amazing. Pinky Galani is 40, she looks amazing. Nana Banamo is 40, she looks amazing. So what's the big deal? Like, what's the big deal? And I think finally on just being myself and embracing there was a day I was watching Women's World or Women in the World. It's a conference and Tracy Ellis Ross was speaking. And she was saying when the makeup artist was doing her makeup, she wanted to cover the dark lines and the tired lines under her eyes. And she said, don't. And her school of thought was really interesting. She said, this body has been through life. Like the lines under my eyes show you how hard I've worked all the nights I've spent up working. It, it, it's, it's me, it's my story, so why do we want to hide it? And the long story of it is social media sells vanity. Let that sink in, social media sells vanity. If you got to look beneath the surface, you'll realize that it's like, Hamona said, it's like painting the wind or a candle in the wind, yeah? Is a zero sum game. It's not going anywhere. So everything became aborted. Um, no book job. And actually, the older, here's the thing I can the older you grow, the more you settle in your body. Like, I saw a picture of me in 2017 and I was like, are this what you wanted to fix? They looked good. And now I'm at a place where I'm going to appreciate the place that I'm at physically so that. 10 years from now, I'm like, yeah, I enjoyed that face and also enjoyed the other face that I was at. Also, like, I stopped going to the gym and now I just self-train like I run every morning and my legs look phenomenal. I'm not going to show you, but my legs, oh, 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 jeez. They look like a runner's legs, you know. And I also realized because also the gym has that vulture culture, the, the six-pack and all that stuff and look like this and trim it. Someone told me, if you're not an athlete or a full-time health influencer, looking like that is going to be nearly impossible because you have to work. You eat like a normal person, you know? Who's gonna eat seven meals a day and you have work the next day? It's nearly impossible. So the goal became not six pork or chiseled. The goal became, how do I stay healthy? Every morning when I run, it's good for my mental health, it's good for my physical health. If I'm not feeling great, I'll dance to lift my mood or something like that. So the older I'm growing, the more I'm settling into it. So no boob job, no tummy tuck. It, those are my intestines and I'm going to be proud of them. Um, the hip dips are staying. I mean, if Karuchi has them, who am I? Oh, and there's this chick. I love her. She's called No Ordinary Noir. Chingugutu on Instagram. She says, if Beyonce has a fupa, 
<laughs> you're not going to tell her anything about her fupa and she's just like she's done amazing like there's a way I'll, I'll insert a clip she just slaps her stomach and she's like and there's this quote she's saying even over 25 she, it, she was like if you're waiting to get a beach body to go to the beach we're gonna leave you we're going to the beach we're gonna leave you so it, it's nice to see that now a new crop of influencers are coming up and inspiring people to be comfortable in their bodies and it's just amazing so i'm gonna save all the money not that i even had it <laughs> because we're really getting to for my money but um all the plastic surgery coats have gone outside the window and i'm okay anyone who's not okay with me being okay with myself can show themselves the door because we need about that energy that said go to stella chanelli's speech and tell her I want her to take me to the beach. Yes, I said it. I'm gonna wear a bikini. <laughs> will I post a picture? No, 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 no. But I will ride off her confidence. You know, like she was bikinis and she's so proud of herself and I want that. I wanna go hang out with her at the beach, go to her channel until I said she needs to find time off her busy schedule to go to the beach. Also, this hair looks really good on me, like super smart. So this is where we end it. I'll see you guys next time. Yeah, thank you. Bye, guys.